Welcome back into the NFL Report. James Palmer, Steve Weiss with you. Steve, I am stoked about this one. This is Andre Johnson, yeah. the Texans great. Once again, a Hall of Fame semifinalist, one of my favorite people to cover, even though, Dre, you used to make us wait forever before you would talk to the media when you were getting out of the shower after a game. You, would take, you were notorious for taking an eternity. Half the people would leave. And you probably liked it that way. No, not really. I just had to uh, I always <laughs> sit in the cold tub for at least 30 minutes after the game. So uh, that's what really took the longest. Got it. See, there it is, Dre. You know, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. But, Andre, we know that you're still so involved with this organization. Um, and you're doing a lot with the Houston Texans. Just what about some of the things that they have been able to do this year? Because nobody coming into the season expected them to be in a playoff hunt at this point of the season. Well, I think the biggest thing was just getting the right coach in here. And um, D'Amico has done a great job. He's done an amazing job. Um, the guys has bought into what he's brought to the organization. And I also think that it, the future looks very bright. You know, he has a great reputation around the uh, NFL, and I think it's, it has also, uh, you know, made this place a landing spot for, for free agents. So um, guys love mm. him around the league. Godly, guys speak highly of him around the league, and he's doing a great job. Andre, you, you played with D'Amico. You you know him as as a as a player. You know him as a person. You know him as a man. When he was kind of being sought after by every team, uh, pretty much that had a head coaching vacancy and wanted D'Amico to come into their building, did you get on the phone and be like, "I know Houston's interviewing you. I know you want to come here, but I, I gotta try to push this over the edge in some capacity because you knew kind of the type of player and type of coach he was." No, I, um, I just. You know, he, he texts me, you know, about him wanting to come to Houston. Um, and I think for me, it was just more of just like, you know, I, I reached out to Cal and um, I just told him, like, you know, we need mm -hmm. to make sure we make the right decision, you know, on this next hire. And, uh, you know, he was in total agreement with me, but I never gave him a name. And... When I found out D'Amico was going to get the job, <laughs> man, it was pure excitement. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Andre, I, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier about D'Amico's reputation around the league. I mean, you were a player. Players talk to, to assistant coaches to each other. But how important is it for you to say, hey, man, you, you want to come here. You want to play for this guy. He's going to get the best out of you. He's going to treat you a certain way. Talk to us about that grapevine and how much you think that's going to help the Texans as long as D'Amico Ryans is their head coach? I mean, I think if you look at uh, when he was in San Francisco and he was the defensive coordinator, the way the guys responded to him. Um, and even then, you know, everybody spoke so highly of him. Um, even him at, being here as a teammate, you know, he always had that leadership quality about him. Um it's no surprise to me or any of his teammates. If you would have saw his press conference, there was so many of his former teammates here. Um, just so excited mm -hmm. for him to to be the head coach here. So um, I've seen every press conference here except for Dom Capers. And when the, during D'Amico's press conference, it was the most energy I had ever seen in this building um, for a head coach that was coming in here. So uh, he had... I mean, from local rappers uh, to his former teammates, anybody that was involved in this community was so excited to have him back here because we knew what we were getting as a head coach. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, yeah. was Megan I'm assuming, I'm assuming. I'm assuming Bun was fired up. No, I bet you Bun was there. Bun was fired up, I guarantee Yeah, Bun B, Bun B was definitely there. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely there. Yeah, he was, he was, I, Listen, yeah, Trey, he, was Trey, rocking, he was rocking. Go ahead. I know he was. I know. He was. I, 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 I want to touch on that because you mentioned everything that you've seen in that building. You have said, you know, I think it was recently that you're going to be around this organization until they put you in the ground. You just love right. the Houston Texans organization. You spend time on the, on the business side. You spend time around the football side. So with that said, and I've been to a couple of games this year and seen what that building looks like. What is the biggest difference right now from what the last couple of years were and now what it is in your mind? 
to me, it's just, um, it has more of like, so when I first got here, um, everything about this organization was kind of family oriented. Uh, you got to mm -hmm. know people on the business side, you know, you got to meet their families, you got to, you know, spend time with, with their kids. And it, it, it just kind of, it made everybody just kind of want to win and, and, and do the right things for the organization. And I think, you know, in the previous years, everything was so separated. And I think now we're getting back to where, you know, guys are hanging out, spending time with each other, like CJ does things for the guys, has guys over to his house. Mm -hmm. um, just the camaraderie is so different. Like when I was playing, we would sit out in the parking lot after the games, win or lose. And, you know, our kid, guys, kids and families would, you know, just sit around. We'll talk about the game and, you know, talk about things we could have done different and fix. And um, I think that's what it's getting back to. It's just, you know, bringing back mm. the, the old things that we used to do and the, and the camaraderie is, is is back where it needs to be. Well, Andre, you've got that, that aspect of it, which is hugely important, but you also got a quarterback in C.J. Stroud. I mean, what has yeah. he done whew, to accelerate the success of this team? Um, C.J. is just a amazing leader um he's a he's a leader of men uh even though he's young you know he came in right away and grabbed the attention of the team and like i said he right now to this day um he has guys over to his house and you know the guys get to hang out and you know just kind of build as a team and you know all the guys have bought into his leadership and one thing about cj that i noticed about him He's not going to go out there and make the same mistake twice. He's a very fast learner. Um, I know people gave him some bad press about his learning abilities and things like that coming out for the draft. But, I mean, he's mm -hmm. proved everybody wrong. So, um, I'm very excited about him being our quarterback and the future of his career. All right, Dre, before we let you go, as I said at the top, once again – a Pro Football Hall of Fame semifinalist. So I'm curious. Steve and I were talking about this. Your combination of size and speed was remarkable. And Steve keeps bringing up DK Metcalf as like size and speed. I'm curious who do you like right. to watch right now with the way you played the game and maybe the way maybe a receiver sticks out in today's game that you like watching. Um, I like to watch all of them. Um. AJ Brown is probably AJ Brown and Debo Samuel mm. right now are probably my two favorite uh, because I mean okay. Debo is just I mean they play the game physical like I like to play the game so um, DK is a guy I like to watch also uh, but my two favorite right now I would have to say is AJ Brown and um, Debo Samuel. Good hey, Ozzy, we're out of time, so I'm going to tell him because, you know, we keep on talking about DK Metcalf and him hitting 23 miles an hour. You were the Big East 60-meter indoor champion back in the day and the Big East 100-meter track and field champion, so you got some skates. I'd like to see you and DK go at it in your prime. But, Andre, Andre thank you so much <laughs> for joining James and I here on the NFL Report, man. That insight was absolutely fantastic. All right, thank you guys for having me.